Trump explains why the Battle of Gettysburg holds such importance for him personally and why it is such a significant event in American history in this unique and heartfelt explanation. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was, the Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable, I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. It, it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. Trump not only forgot who he ran against in 2016, but also who he's running against right now in 2024. As you know, crooked Joe Biden and the radical left thugs who have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent, and leading by a lot, including Obama, including Obama, including Obama, including Obama. Well, I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. This is the same thing. The country is very divided. Trump is concerned that, due to current international tensions, Biden will lead us into World War II. Yes, that's right, World War II. We have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country, who is cognitively impaired, in no condition to lead, and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war. Just think of it. We would be in World War II. Trump thinks Nikki Haley was in charge of security at the Capitol on January 6th, then lies about offering 10,000 officers for security, and says that Nikki Haley deleted and destroyed all the J6 evidence? Sure, that sounds legit. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, you know, they, did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything, deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it, because of lots of things, like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Trump realizes for the first time that U.S., for United States, is spelled exactly the same as the word us, and wonders aloud whether anyone else has noticed this shocking and genius discovery. Macron, nice guy. You know, look, he's for France. I'm for, I'm for us. I'm for us. You know how you spell us, right? You spell us, U.S. I just picked that up. Has anyone ever thought of that? I just picked that up. A couple of days I'm reading and it said us. And I said, you know, if you think about it, us equals U.S. Is, isn't that? Now, if we say something genius, they'll never say it. Trump declares he is honored to be an ally of Viktor Orban, the prime minister of Hungary, and highly respects him. Even though Hungary is no longer considered a democracy and is now considered to be an autocracy. And as you would expect, Trump has no idea what country Orban represents and thinks it's Turkey, because Trump's only takeaway is autocracy good, democracy bad. He doesn't understand or care about the rest. You know, I was very honored as a man, Viktor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's probably like one of the strongest leaders anywhere in the world. And he, uh, he's the leader of, right? He's the leader of Turkey. Trump thinks Jeb Bush is a military person and was responsible for getting us into the Middle East conflict. Sure, makes perfect sense. You know, the beauty was when I came here, everyone thought Bush was going to win. And then they took a poll and they found out Trump was up by about 50 points. Everyone said, what's going on right here? They thought Bush because Bush supposedly was a military person. Great. You know what? He was a military. He got us into the uh, he got us into the Middle East. How did that work out? Right. Trump questions the decisions being made by the Obama administration in Ukraine. Yes, that's right the Obama administration in Ukraine. And now they're getting hit very hard by the North. And I'm really shocked that the Obama administration can be out there saying, I hope they don't attack from the North. And I'm really shocked that the Obama administration can be out there saying, I hope they don't attack from the North. Trump's endless stream of misstatements, lies, and slurred nonsensical gibberish culminated in a Nikki Haley response that was both hilarious and alarming. Tonight, Trump is at a rally. And he's going on and on mentioning me multiple times as to why I didn't take security during the Capitol riots. Why I didn't handle January 6th better. I wasn't even in D.C. In, on January 6th. I wasn't in office then. They're saying he got confused that he was talking about something else. He was talking about Nancy Pelosi. He mentioned me multiple times in that scenario. 
the concern I have is I'm not saying anything derogatory, but when you're dealing with the pressures of a presidency, we can't have someone else that we question whether they're mentally fit to do this. Trump's alarming cognitive decline and increasing tendencies towards fascism and authoritarianism over the last few years has even caught the attention of Fox News. The list is long, sad, seditious, and criminal. I put together some of Trump's latest cognitive beauties from the last 10 days. He said you need an ID to buy bread. Has anyone shown ID to get Wonder Bread lately? He said that he ran against Obama in 2016. He ran against Hillary Clinton. He warned that Biden will get us into World War II, which I'm pretty sure we already fought and won. And yesterday, he confused Jeb Bush and George W. Bush and said that Jeb got us involved in the Middle East. And then, of course, there are his authoritarian posts on Truth Social calling for the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to be executed and saying that he's going to investigate media companies that he doesn't well, like. You know and can you imagine if Biden said, you know what, I'm going to look into that Fox News. This, they don't seem to like me over there. Brian Tyler Cohen explains the reasons they are making up a continuous stream of lies about President Biden's memory and cognitive decline, including taking portions of Biden videos out of context and or knowingly using deep fake videos to spread disinformation and propaganda. He also lists the multiple accomplishments of the Biden administration, far eclipsing the failed and disgraced Trump presidency. All of this is to explain why we keep hearing this narrative that Joe Biden is in cognitive decline. It is to compensate for the fact that Donald Trump is falling apart before our very eyes. Joe Biden can trip over a sandbag one time in 2021, but Trump goes on a screed about how Nikki Haley was in charge of the Capitol on January 6th and how Obama is the current president and how World War II hasn't happened yet and how you need ID to buy bread and how the letters U.S. for United States also spell the word us and how the Battle of Gettysburg was beautiful. Trump does all of that and it's crickets from the media. The right wing media ecosystem can clearly plainly see what's happening with Trump. And they know that if they don't get ahead of it with hysterical coverage about Joe Biden, that people will start to see Donald Trump for who he is. And clearly, that wouldn't do him any favors. Here's another reason why it's so important for Republicans to hammer away at this narrative that Biden's incompetent. It is to try and erase the fact that his actual success far, far eclipses what Trump did when he was in office. Joe Biden is presiding over the strongest recovery in American history. He's added the most jobs of any president in the history of this country. Unemployment's been below 4% for 26 straight months, the longest stretch in over 50 years. GDP is surging. Wages are outpacing inflation. Inflation itself is flat. Consumer sentiment is skyrocketing. This is the economy that Republicans campaign on creating while never managing to actually deliver it. Add that to the long list of legislative accomplishments. The American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Law, the Gun Safety Law, the PACT Act, the CHIPS Act, the Reauthorization of Violence Against Women Act, codifying marriage equality into federal law, forgiving $153 billion of student loan debt for 4.3 million people, and fortifying NATO amid Russia's war against Ukraine. Not only is Joe Biden a competent president, but he's managed the most progressive and successful presidency of our lifetimes, even turning Trump-era punchlines into actual legislative wins. Contrast that with Donald Trump, whose only legislative achievement during his presidency was a tax cut that overwhelmingly favored millionaires and billionaires. He promised an infrastructure plan and never delivered. He promised a health care plan and never delivered. He promised a middle class tax cut and never delivered. And he promised record jobs and never delivered. He promised an extraordinary presidency, and he did give us that just not in the way that we expected, considering he lost the most jobs in modern American history. Historic? Yes. Successful? <laughs> no. Wondering why Trump and his allies are so hell-bent on framing Biden as being in the throes of cognitive decline? This is why. It is nothing more than projection. They all recognize very clearly what Trump's principal weakness is, and so in order to neutralize that, they're working in overdrive to try and diffuse that weakness onto Biden. Per usual, every accusation is a confession. So the next time any of the right's willful accomplices in the mainstream media takes the bait and makes Biden's mental state the center of attention, ask them why they're silent on the issue of Trump's mental state. Ask them why Trump gets a pass. Ask them why Trump gets graded on the curve. Ask them what it says that Trump would fail a third grade history exam. Republicans have certainly learned how to game the refs, but the reason is obvious. They have to do everything in their power to carry water for a guy who still brags about passing a cognitive test whose questions include identifying different animals. I mean, my God. 
And look, the fact that the right is growing more and more desperate to shoehorn this narrative forward should tell us something. They all realize that the guy that they're breathlessly defending is a rambling moron. They all realize that his grasp of basic concepts and facts and even words is tenuous at best. So they might think that they're helping him, but all it's doing is shining a spotlight on just how broken Donald Trump's brain actually is. Thank <laughs> you.